Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. When you look back through time during the periods when this country decided to tell people what drugs they could do and which ones they couldn't, particularly during the uh, 20s prior to the Depression, mid-20s where you had the Harrison Tax Act came about uh, by the Bureau of Narcotics, and then a, subsequently a few years later in 1937, post-Depression, when the uh, Marijuana Tax Act came out and outlawed hemp and cannabis and all, you've got to kind of look at the time frame in, the, in our history and uh, the fact that the, the, you know, the economy wasn't very good. We were right during the time when they made uh, the Narcotics Act, the Harrison Narcotics Treaty and all, our country was on the slide of going down into a Great Depression. Uh, the, mar the market hadn't crashed yet and all, but all the signs of like what we're seeing today in our economy and all that, all those were visible then. And when you, when you look at that mind frame of people and the people that are in charge during those times and all, they want to, uh, they know what these, these types of situations bring about. And they bring unrest and unsettlement among the, the populace. And that's one of the things the government fears the most is when the public gets unsettled. And the only way that they know how to control it is to bring about measures of control. And that's how these came about. And they, they really were based in a time of puritanical control. It was, it was a time when women couldn't vote. Blacks certainly didn't have any rights. People didn't even believe in evolution. I mean, they're, <clears throat> when you look at all the things that were going on back then and all the ideas that people had and all, really, these, these ideas were pretty much founded on this staunch religious you know, beliefs and, and how everybody had this need and, and desire to tell everybody else what to do. It's like they had this holier-than-thou attitude. And of course, this persisted through the decades. I mean, we, other than the brief time we, we grew hemp during the World War II and the Hemp for Victory campaign, this, this persisted on through. And, and of course, we had the uh, International Treaty with the Singles Narcotics, and this brought about our Controlled Substance Act with Nixon and all. But, you know, the, we, it's like we still live in the dark ages of thought when we look at the laws today, and they were wrong back then. I mean, it was there was no uh, there was no validity to any of those types of laws, and certainly no no validity for having a controlled substance. This, when Timothy Leary sued the uh, filed suit against the United States government over the Marijuana Tax Act, saying that you pretty much jeopardized yourself, you know, before the you know the the law itself, you you pretty much were snafu'd even before you even had any problem with the law, and it. And once they just threw that out, well, you know, they rushed, I'm sure, their committees formed right away, and for three or four years they haggled over to figuring out how, how can we control this. And, of course, that's when they came up with the Controlled Substance Act. But, but you, the mindset of the people has changed so much since then. Here we are, we're in 2011 now, and we are still reverting back to these dark, puritanical days of control and, and we're enforcing these laws just like the day they were put in place and all. And it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. And there, there is no regard when and you take the Marijuana Tax Act, you know, we had a small group of people that were in power, you know, and they were, they were selling out to special interests and they knew that they could not compete with hemp. I mean, how do you compete with the substance in a plant that's that versatile? one that offers up so many products, one that grows so easy, one that grows in such a poor soil. How do you compete with that? They knew that. They knew that, that it was a renewable crop that in some places could be done twice a year. And their pine trees and, and all their different sources for pulp paper and different products, cellulose products and stuff, those are 20 to 40 year ventures. So there was no way that anybody was gonna be able to keep up with the hemp. And the only way they were able to is the fact that they outlawed it. And by outlawing it, they took away the freedom of choice that Americans have. This, what this country was based on, our very foundation is based on freedom. It's based on a right to choose. It's based on you know, these unenable rights that you were born with. And, and when you come across laws like the Harrison Tax Act of the 20, in 1925, which had pretty much outlawed all the, the heavy narcotics and all made legislation against them and created the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, then you look at the Marijuana Tax Act 15 years later, or nearly 15 years later. I mean, we've been, we've literally been living in eight decades, almost a century of this tight-fisted puritanical control, and, and it's unnecessary. 
we went through prohibition with alcohol. We found out all the problems of keeping stuff illegal law, and we never learned the lesson from that. And here we are, we've moved forward into this war on drugs, this drug enforcement agency. The, you know, we've outlawed an, uh, the herb cannabis, which keeps us from having the hemp industry, which today, if we had this industry in place, I mean, we, we would be looking at a trillion and a half dollar industry. How many jobs is that gonna support? How many tax revenues can that generate? How many different avenues of products and different jobs would that generate? The sky's the limit. And with the distress that our country's in, and all of our Congress, I mean, they're just so stupid. They have this, like one of them said the other day, y'all are stuck in this reefer madness mode. And it's so true. I mean, we're, we're back in the dark ages of thought, and yet the scientific evaluation of marijuana, we know how it works. We know how it works in the brain. We know it's safe. We know that you'd have to consume 1,500 pounds of it in one puff for it to become deadly to you. There's never been a recorded overdose on cannabis since the dawn of time. There's never been one recorded hospital emergency room visit for cannabis overdose, not one time in this country. How do you continue allowing a police force like the Drug Enforcement Agency and all, for that matter, all of the other police forces to control a substance that is a safe herb that has killed nobody? That is anybody's right and individual choice to use that if they so desire. My personal belief is that cannabis herb is very beneficial to you and incorporating it in your daily use and all will make you a healthier person. It'll make you live longer. It'll keep you from taking pharmaceuticals. It'll keep you from becoming an alcoholic and quite possibly keep you from becoming addicted to nicotine through cigarettes. I mean, there, there are so many beneficial side, uh, side effects of marijuana. Most of the time when you look at these drug commercials on television and all, you're afraid for, to, for anybody to take any of them. When I hear them, I just shudder. And then when they start reading the side effects and all the stuff it causes and all, I'm thinking, what kind of idiots would even put something like that in their mouth? Why don't you just go grab the, the jar of poison there that has the skull and crossbones on it, take you a big swig of it. It wouldn't be much different. Over time, if you take those other substances, you're pretty much gonna get the end result. You don't see that with the cannabis herb. You don't see these debilitating issues with the cannabis herb. It, it's actually a rehabilitating herb. It's one that can heal. There, there are countless cases, thousands and thousands and thousands of people who have given testimonials that have said, can, this cannabis herb helped me. It got me over my cancer, it got me over my illnesses, it got me over my lymphatic system diseases, it got me over my, my issues of, of just general lethargy. And, 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 you know, cannabis is one of those that when they, when they first coined that it was a mind-expanding drug, which I hate that word because it's an herb, it's not, a, it's not one that's synthesized in the laboratory, anything like that, but it is a mind expanding, but it doesn't, it's not a mind expanding to the point that it keeps you to where you can't think. This actually opens up your mind and allows you to think more clearly. It allows you to, to think about things that your, your mind may not have ever even wondered to before. What's wrong with that? And one of the side effects is that, is the euphoria that makes you feel very pleasant and very good. There, are, it doesn't make you go out and do dangerous things. It doesn't make you want to go out and do something stupid and beat somebody over the head. Or, or have to go rob a bank to support your habit. This is something we could grow ourselves and, and, and produce the cleanest, most organic proof uh, herb that you could possibly want to ingest. So with all of these in mind, and we know the scientific pathway of cannabis, it's not a mystery. We know that it's not dangerous. We know that the brain only allows a certain amount of uptake with cannabis in the brain. The receptors, even with the more potent varieties, become fewer and fewer in the brain fewer and fewer become available. So this is why it's not a threat. This is why it's not a public threat. This is why people aren't, you know, there's not a problem with cannabis. Yet the laws, the Controlled Substance Act, the Drug Enforcement Agency, the Department of Justice, the Bureau of Prisons, the military industrial complex to some degree, with the Border Patrol and Homeland Security and all of that, we, we go after this like it's the scourge of man. And it, it, it's just absolutely wrong. This comes down to a freedom issue. It comes down to a constitution-based issue, one that the founding fathers set up, one they knew. This is a right and freedom of choice. This is your choice. If you decide to use the cannabis herb, if you want the medicinal benefits of it, you want the social benefits of it, or you just enjoy the euphoria and you want to get high on it and sit, kick back, 
It's no different than people that are allowed to take a to drink a beer or take a drink or anything like that. They're not pounced on by the DEA. They're not arrested. They're not thrown in jail. They're not having their lives ruined, you know. And people who choose that get caught to to grow the cannabis herb and all they they know how beneficial it is for them. They know how dangerous it is to go out on the streets and try to procure it from some, you know, cartel gang or something like that. How dangerous that is. Why why do we let all that exist in America? We're about freedom. We're about freedom of choice. We're not about, you know, giving these cartels this this impunitive power where they just can go and murder and kill at random just because they want to and because they can. We're not about that in America. How do we how do we stand back as a race and continue to ruin people's lives? How do we stand back as a race and say, "I know what's better for you than you know." That, this is so wrong. We're not put here on this planet to decide and run the business of our neighbor or somebody down the street or somebody across the country. We're set here to run our own business. If an individual wants to use cannabis, it's his God-given right. It's his constitutional right. It's his right as an individual. And it's his right of choice. It's his freedom of choice. Come on, America. Wake up. This is very simple. This is not something that should fall under the hands of somebody else telling you what to do. And we certainly shouldn't have a drug enforcement agency or a police force that chases after the people who want to use safe herbs. This is wrong. We have the most two dangerous drugs legal, alcohol and cigarettes. If you have those legal, then there should be no laws against any of the other drugs because statistics show that the other drugs, by comparison, way by far are much safer. And cannabis, cannabis itself, is the safest therapeutic substance on the planet. Wake up, America. Exercise your right of freedom. Tell your government, tell this stupid Congress that can't even get together and even decide a budget. Tell them to get out of our personal business. Tell them to leave us alone when it comes to our freedom of choice. This is our right, it's our constitutional right, our forefathers guaranteed it. And I thank you for joining the Cannabis Corner.